Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at force field analysis. Now, force field analysis is an easy to use tool that can help improve the quality of your decision making. And if you're leading change, then it's a great tool to minimize the resistance to change that your team experiences. It was developed by Kurt Lewin, a German-American psychologist in the 1940s. And he originally applied the model to social psychology, but it's frequently used today to help organizations make strategic decisions. Now, the model can be used to explain the logic behind why a decision has been made or why a decision hasn't been made. And it works on the basis that when we consider any decision, there will be forces in favor and forces against making that decision. The forces in favor of making the decision or change push against those forces that are resisting the change. So all the model is really saying, and you can see that on the image here, is that the forces on the left of the diagram, those driving for change, should be stronger than those on the right of, of the diagram, those resisting change, if you want a change to be successful. Now, when you're using the model, you score all the forces to see if the driving forces outweigh resisting forces. And when you do this, then there are three possible outcomes. So the first is that driving forces equal resisting forces. And in this scenario, an equilibrium will exist because you have a balance of counteracting forces. In this situation, change won't be possible and the status quo will remain. Now, the challenge for management in this scenario is to upset the equilibrium by increasing the driving forces and decreasing the resisting forces to make the change they want to see happen more likely to succeed. The next possible outcome is that driving forces are less than resisting forces. And successful change will not be possible in this scenario because the forces resisting change are stronger than those pushing for change. And the final scenario is where driving forces are greater than resisting forces. And here change is possible because the forces in favour of change are stronger than those resisting change. Now note the use of the word forces. It's very deliberate in the model. And that's because a force field analysis isn't an exercise in simply listing the quantifiable facts for and against making a change. It's also about understanding your team's attitude to change. What emotions might people be experiencing that cause them to resist the change? Now you can use the model in one of two ways. First, you can use it to help you determine whether to move forward with a decision or not. Secondly, if you're managing organizational change, it can help you see what might be causing people within your team to resist change. Now, to make your change initiative more likely to succeed, you can then take steps to increase driving forces, reduce restraining forces, and in that way, your team is more likely to support the change, and therefore your change is more likely to be successful. Now, a force field analysis is often used in conjunction with the first step of Lewin's three-step model that you can see in the image here, also known as the unfreeze, change, refreeze model. And the first step of this model is to prepare and motivate your team to want to change before the process of actually implementing the change begins. Now, using a force field analysis during this step of Lewin's three-step model can help you create stronger and more compelling reasons for people to embrace the proposed change, and that's going to make the change more likely to be successful. So what causes people to resist change? Well, if you're responsible for leading change, then it can be useful to understand why people might resist change. First off, understand that resistance to change is completely normal because by, it, by its very nature, change is stressful and disruptive. But some of the main reasons people resist change are they perceive a threat from the change, such as they might lose their job. Inertia means they'd rather keep things the same as they are now. Maybe they disagree with your assessment of why the change is important and needs to happen. And finally, there might be a fundamental misunderstanding about 
the threat being faced by the business or the position of the organization. And that maybe is because of a lack of a communication. Now, before we jump in and walk through the steps you need to do to create your own force field analysis, it can be helpful to look at a force field analysis example. So you get a good understanding of what you're trying to end up with once your analysis is complete. You can see here, we have the driving forces on the left and the resisting forces on the right. And at the bottom of the page here, you can see that we've tallied the driving and the resisting forces separately. And you can also see that the driving forces are higher than resisting forces for this change we want to make here. And that means that change is more likely to be successful. Now, this image is actually based on a force field analysis template that you can download to perform your own analysis. To get the template, just follow the link to the companion article to this video beneath the video. So by now you should have a good understanding of why force field analysis is useful, but how do you actually go about performing one in practice? Well, to do this, all you're going to need is the template you can download beneath this video or a blank whiteboard. But you should note that to achieve a high quality outcome, it can be helpful to perform the analysis as a group exercise with key stakeholders. So the first step of force field analysis is to define the future state you want to achieve or your future goal. Alternatively, you can write down the present state or situation if you'd like to understand the current forces at play. The second step is to brainstorm the forces driving change. Now, these forces can be internal or external. Internal driving forces might include a desire to increase revenue, profit or market share, or maybe a drive to change the organizational culture. External driving forces might include the fact that new customers are demanding new products or changes to products or services. Maybe new competitors or products make your current offerings outdated. The third step is to brainstorm the forces that are resisting change. And again, these can be internal or external. So internally, these could be certain staff are reluctant to relinquish power, or maybe the team or certain members of the team are fearful of losing their jobs. External forces might include things like your existing contracts with partners or suppliers would be invalidated, or you're worried about the response of existing customers, for example. The fourth step is to assign scores to each force you've identified. Now, typically you score each force from one to five with one meaning the force is very weak and five meaning the force is very strong. Once each individual force has a score, you need to tally all the driving forces and separately all the resisting forces, as we saw in the example image, to understand the total driving and resisting force. And you can interpret that as follows. So if the driving forces total more than the resisting forces, then change is possible. And the bigger the gap between the two values, the easier change is going to be. If the driving forces are less than the resisting forces, then change is simply not possible. And the bigger the gap again, the harder it's going to be. If driving forces total the same as the resisting forces, then we have an equilibrium, and but again, change will not be possible. Now, the final step is called make adjustments and apply. And this step represents the key strength of the model because it ensures that Firstly, you're crystal clear that the change is the right thing to do. And secondly, you can explain the reasons for the change in a manner that will most likely get your team to support the change. And of course, if your team support the change, then the change is more likely to happen successfully. So in this final step, your task is to try and increase your rating for each of the driving forces and reduce your rating for each of the resisting forces. Sometimes this won't be something you can do in the brainstorming session and you'll need to draw up an action plan to make it happen. So for example, suppose your team was fearful of using new technology and you'd rated this a five. 
You could draw up a plan to train your team to use the latest technology with the intention to help them realize that the new technology actually makes their roles more interesting and more varied. And once you've done this, you estimate you could reduce this rating down from a five to a two. And by doing that, you will reduce the resistance to change. Now, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with the model in terms of advantages. Then it provides an easy to understand visual summary of the forces for and against a change. The model encourages you to consider non-quantitative data as part of your analysis, such as how your team feels about the proposed change. By taking the time to maximize driving forces and minimize resisting forces, then the model allows you to present your decision in the best possible light to your team. And this makes it more likely that they'll support the change, which in turn makes it more likely that the change will be successful. In terms of disadvantages, then the output from the model is only as good as the quality of the inputs that go into it. So if key people are excluded from the analysis or the brainstorming session, then the result of the analysis is likely to be poor or inaccurate. And finally, substantial differences of opinion might emerge during the brainstorming session, but the model provides no guidance as to how to proceed when this happens. So in summary, force field analysis is an easy to use tool created by Kurt Lewin that can help you improve the quality of your decision making and improve your chances of leading successful change. The real power of the force field analysis is that it gives you a mechanism to think about and then reduce the resistance to change that people within your organization might experience. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.